Uh, he also created covers for Western and non-genre novels with the explicitness of his later cover for The Private Life of Helen of Troy, causing a sensation. Uh, the next is Margaret Brundage, who is most associated with Weird Tales, for which he produced a great number of salacious covers featuring female nudity in the 1930s. Given a change in preferences, she did only one rather tame cover for that magazine in that year, as well as some interior art. I would love to see that tame cover. Boris Dolgov provided Weird Tales magazine with atmospheric black and white interior art, uh, though in the future he would create many covers. His work was said to be inspired by the work of Maxfield Parrish. Matt Fox produced one cover and atmospheric black and white interior art for Weird Tales in 1944, as well as a memorable illustration for Algernon Blackwood's The Wendigo in fan famous Fantastic Mysteries. He would go on to do a wide variety of work in comic books, as well as more work for Weird Tales. Then we have Paul Auburn, who created covers for Astounding, but more noticeably he was an industrious producer of interior art, whose work appeared in every issue of Astounding in 1944. William Timmons illustrated almost every cover of Astounding in 1944, wow, with particular praise for his illustration for Theodore Sturgeon's Killdozer! Exclamation mark. His work ranged from the abstract to the intimate, and he seemed to be comfortable drawing robots and spaceships as drawing people. Same here. All right, and the winner of this year's or <laughs> Margaret Brundage. Hi, I'm Nava Wolf, winner of the Hugo Award for Best Editor Long Form in 2019, here to present the 1945 Retro Hugo for Best Editor Short Form. Before we get to the nominees, I think it's important to recognize that one of the finalists in this category is a hugely problematic figure. As Jeanette being powerfully described in her astounding award winner speech last year, John W. Campbell espoused views that were racist, fascist, offensive, and harmful, and it's shameful that an award was named after him for so long. We can all be grateful that the award's name has finally been changed. This is a wonderful moment, and I don't want to linger on Campbell's misdeeds, but I didn't feel like I could recognize this worthy list of finalists without making my feelings on this issue known. Best Editor Short Form is awarded to the person who has edited at least four anthologies, collections, or magazine issues devoted to science fiction and or fantasy, at least one of which must have been published in the year of eligibility. The 1944 nominees are John W. Campbell Jr., editor of Astounding Science Fiction. He played a major role in shaping the transition of science fiction from pulpiness to something more serious. A large number of this year's nominees appeared in the pages of Astounding. Oscar J. Friend edited the three titles, Captain Future, Startling Stories, and Thrilling Wonder Stories in 1944, and so was the editor of Lee Brackett's Shadow Over Mars, Best Novel Finalist, and Henry Kuttner's A God Named Crew, a Best Novella Finalist. Mary Nettinger edited Famous Fantastic Mysteries, a fantasy title that specialized in reprinting older work. In 1944 issues, her magazine introduced readers to works by G.K. Chesterton, William Hope Hodgson, Algernon Blackwood, Arthur Machen, and Lord Dunsany. Dorothy McElraith edited Weird Tales, the premier magazine for horror and weird fiction in 1930s and 1940s. In 1944, the magazine published stories by Ray Bradbury, Frank Belknap Long, Robert Bloch, August Derleth, and others, as well as one of Seabury Quinn's Jules de Grandin stories. Raymond A. Palmer edited Amazing Stories and Fantastic Adventures, from the former of which came the novella finalist Intruders from the Stars by Ross Ross. Amazing Stories focused on adventure, action-adventure-oriented science fiction, Fantastic Adventures, a more fantastic fair. W. Scott Peacock edited Jungle Stories, which served up African-set stories and planet stories, an archetypal science fiction pulp magazine, Novella finalist The Jewel of Bass by Lee Brackett, and short story finalist And the God's Laugh by Frederick Brown both appeared in the spring 1944 issue of Planet Stories. And the winner is John W. Campbell Jr. Hi, we are Josh Siegel and Dylan Morgan. It's great to be here at the Hugos, or as I call them, the Everybody Who Guessed That The Future Would Be Scary Was Right Awards. Dylan and I are proud to be part of the team from NBC's The Good Place that won Best Dramatic Presentation Short Form for the last two years. But today, we are here to recognize the awards for 1945. 
Best dramatic presentation short form recognizes works of any medium such as music, film, TV, radio, or video games of less than 90 minutes in length. The 1945 nominees include five examples of film and one radio play. And the nominees are... The Canterville Ghost screenplay by Edwin Harvey Bloom from a story by Oscar Wilde directed by Jules Dassin, Metro-Golden-Mayer, MGM. This fantasy comedy based on an Oscar Wilde short story sees Charles Lawton playing a cowardly medieval ghost trying to inspire his World War II relative. The Curse of the Cat People, written by DeWitt Bodine, directed by Gunther V. Fritsch and Robert Wise, RKO Radio Pictures. The sequel to the 1943 noir, The Cat People, features the villain of the previous installment as a ghost haunting her former husband's family. Robert Wise, the director, would go on to direct The Andromeda Strain, The Haunting, The Day the Earth Stood Still, and Star Trek The Motion Picture. Donovan's Brain, adapted by Robert L. Richards from a story by Kurt Siedemack, producer, director, and editor William Spear, CBS Radio Network. The only radio play among the nominees stars Orson Welles as a scientist who preserves the brain of a ruthless businessman the brain develops telepathy and uses the scientist to further its plans for world domination. House of Frankenstein, screenplay by Edward T. Lowe Jr. from a story by Kurt Seedmack, directed by Earl C. Kenton, Universal Pictures. The Invisible Man's Revenge, written by Bertram Milhauser, directed by Ford Beebeth, Universal Pictures. This sort of sequel to The Invisible Man is about the grandson of the original Invisible Man being turned invisible himself to avenge himself against friends that swindled him out of a diamond mine. It Happened Tomorrow, screenplay and adaptation by Dudley Nichols and Renee Clare, directed by Renee Clare, Arnold Pressburger Films. Adapted from a play by Lord Dunsany, a journalist receives the next day's newspaper and uses it to get scoops and make money until the day he reads his own obituary. And the winner is the Canterville Ghost and the Curse of the Cat People. Good morning, evening, or afternoon. Please delete as applicable. I'm Stephanie Hans, the co creator of Die. I'm Jamie McKelvey, the co creator of The Wicked and the Divine. I'm Kieran Gillen, who co-created Die and the Wicked Divine with Stephanie and Jamie. That both Die and the Wicked Divine are finalists in this year's Yugos is a huge honour for us. Being asked to present the 1944 retro Yugo for graphic story only stresses the immensity of that honour. Being part of a lineage with any of the following books is humbling. 1944 in comics is a golden period, which saw the American media develop an astounding rate and can trace the impact of these books to the present day. The best graphic story is awarded to a science fiction or fantasy story told in graphic And the 1944 finalists are Buck Rogers, Fall of Planetoid by Dick Calkins, National Newspaper Service. This story sees Buck accidentally separated from his beloved Wilma Deering after a spaceship explosion, instead finding himself marooned with a slick ship from Jupiter. Donald Duck, The Mad Chemist by Carl Barks, Dell Comics. In this strip, a bump on the head temporarily turns Donald Duck into a genius, leading to his building a rocket to fly to the moon. Flash Gordon, Battle for Tropica by Don Moore and Alex Raymond, King Feature Syndicate, and Flash Gordon, Triumph in Tropica by Don Moore and Alex Raymond, King Feature Syndicate. These two stories follow on from one another and originally appeared in Sunday newspapers. They follow Flash Gordon struggling to overthrow Brazor, the evil tyrant of Tropica, and restore Dizra, the rightful queen, to the throne. These were the last Flash Gordon strips drawn by Alex Raymond, the series creator. The Spirit for the Love of Clara Le Faux by Manly Wade Wellman, Lou Pine, and Dom Commissaro, Register and Tribute Syndicate. The Spirit's creator, Will Eisner, was serving in the military, leaving others to write and draw the strip. This short tale sees the Spirit intervene from what appears to be murder attempts from her former lover. Superman, the mysterious Mr. Mixelplick by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, Detective Comics, Inc. This was the first story featuring the mysterious figure from another dimension, whose strange sense of humor drives him to visit Metropolis and cause trouble for Superman. 
And the winner is... Superman, The Mysterious Mr. Mixelplick by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster. Hello, I'm Lewin. I'm from the Tag Wrangling Committee as well as the Elections Committee. Hi, I'm Hillary, and I'm a member of the Tag Wrangling Committee. Hi, I'm Atre, translator for Team Bengali at Adras Formative Works. I'm Jessica Lewis from the OTW Board of Directors. Hi, I'm Sophie from the Communications Committee and the Finance Committee. And I'm Matt from the Translation Committee and current president of the Organization for Transformative Works. Last year, we were overjoyed to win the 2019 Hugo Award for Best Related Work. And this year, it is my pleasure to be joined by some of my fellow volunteers from around the world to present the 1944 Retro Award for the same category. Best Related Work is awarded to a work related to the field of science fiction, fantasy, or fandom, appearing for the first time during the previous calendar year, or which has been substantially modified during the previous calendar year. The types of works eligible include, but are not limited to, collections of art, works of literary criticism, books about the making of a film or TV series, biographies, and so on, provided that they do not qualify for another category. Nonfiction collections and fiction anthologies are also eligible. The 1944 finalists are Pancyclopedia by Jack Spear, Forrest J. Grumman, compiled by Fa Jack Spear and published by Forrest J. Grumman. This encyclopedia of the quirky world of the 1944 fandom was originally published in just 250 stenciled copies. 4244, a contemporary memoir upon human behavior during the crisis of the world revolution by H.G. Wells, published by Secker and Walker. This volume collects essays he had written on the way the world was then going and how he saw its future prospects. Mr. Tompkins Explores the Atom by George Gamow, Cambridge University Press. This book attempts to explain nuclear physics to a general reader by having the eponymous Mr. Tompkins attend lectures on the subject and converse with leading scientists. Rockets, The Future of Travel Beyond the Stratosphere by Willie Lee. Viking Press. Lee draws on his early experiences as a rocketry enthusiast in Germany, which he escaped in 1935, and attempts to realistically describe how the future rockets may bring people to space and even to the moon. The Science Fiction Field by Lee Brackett, published in Writer's Digest, July 1944. Lay Brackett takes a break from writing fiction to present this overview of the science fiction field for her fellow writers. The works of H.P. Lovecraft, Suggestions for a Critical Appraisal, by Fritz Leiber, The Acolyte, Fall 1944. A writer of horror and sword and sorcery, Fritz Leiber was also an associate of H.P. Lovecraft, and this essay was an early attempt to establish the Providence writer of cosmic horror as a serious literary figure. And the winner is the science fiction field. Hi, I'm Shannon McGuire, and I've been a member of the World Science Fiction Society since I was 14 years old. In addition to that, I am one of your nominees this year for the best series category in the Modern Hugo Awards. And so I am overjoyed to be able to present to you the award for best series in the Retro Hugos. These are the awards for 1944. And as such, we are honoring works that were relevant and significant in that time period. Some of which may include material that is unappetizing, distasteful, and even offensive to modern audiences. That does not change the fact that at, night, at this time in 1944, these were things that were considered some of the best the genre had to offer. And in a certain way, retro Hugos have already done something that modern Hugo nominees have not done. They have withstood the test of time enough to be nominated now, more than 60 years after the fact. 
I certainly hope that if we are ever in a situation where they have to do retro Hugos for the years where I've been actively writing, that my work will still be considered as fondly and as frequently as some of these works. Best series is awarded for multi-installment works appearing in at least three installments with a total of at least 240,000 words between them, with a minimum of one installment coming out in the previous year. The 1944 nominees are Captain Future by Brett Sterling with pseudonym Edmund Hamilton. Usually appeared first in the magazine of the same name, Captain Future is a brilliant scientist and adventurer who travels the solar system battling supervillains with the aid of his colleagues, the Future Men. The Cthulhu Mythos by H.P. Lovecraft, August Derleth, and others. The famous series, which takes its name from the tentacle monstrosity appearing in Lovecraft's 1928 short story, The Call of Cthulhu, went on to be continued by many diverse hands and many authors extending even unto the present day. By 1944, authors including August Erlith, Robert E. Howard, Frank Belknap Long, and Robert Block had all written Cthulhu Mythos material. Doc Savage by Lester B. Gibson. Starting life as a character in radio dramas, Walter B. Gibson wrote stories about the proto-superhero The Shadow with powers of hypnotism to fight crime. Published under the pseudonym Maxwell Grant starting in 1933, by the end of 1944, some 286 novels featuring the character had appeared. The Shadow is a crime fighter, but his dark clothes and strange powers make him an oddly sinister figure. And the winner is The Cthulhu Mythos by H.P. Lovecraft, August Derleth, and others. I'm Alex E. Harrow the winner of the 2019 Hugo Award for Best Short Story and a finalist this year in the short story and novel categories. It is my absolute honor to be part of the 1944 Hugos. Best Short Story is awarded for a science fiction or fantasy story of less than 7,500 words. The 1944 finalists are And the Gods Laughed by Friedrich Brown in Planet Stories, Spring 1944. A group of spacers tell tall tales of things they have encountered in the solar system before a mention of earrings reminds another of aliens that he encountered on Ganymede who did not wear earrings but were worn by them. A creepy tale of possession unfolds. Desertion by Clifford D. Simak in Astounding Science Fiction, November 1944. A city story set on Jupiter, where humans have established research stations. Explorers have been venturing out into the dangerous planet in surgically enhanced bodies, but none of them have returned. So the base commander decides to go out exploring himself with his dog. Far Centaurus by A. E. Van Vogt in Astounding Science Fiction, January 1944, starts on a spaceship traveling to Alpha Centauri on a journey set to last for centuries, with a crew in suspended animation who wake up periodically in ships to perform essential maintenance. The routine is broken when one of the crew wakes up to discover that something has gone wrong and one of his comrades has died. Huddling Place by Clifford D. C. Mack in Astounding Science Fiction, July 1944. Another city story, this story deals with psychological themes and mental illness. The protagonist suffers from acute agoraphobia, exasperated by the ease with which advanced technology allows him to communicate instantly with anyone anywhere. As the story goes on, we see that the same condition has gripped the dispersed inhabitants of the future world. I Rocket by Ray Bradbury in Amazing Stories, May 1944. His only story to make the ballot is told from the point of view of a rocket, a fighting ship in a concluded space war that finds itself lost and abandoned in some ways like its former crew. And The Wedge, or The Traitors, by Isaac Asimov in Astounding Science Fiction, October 1944. The Foundation is spreading its influence over neighboring planets through a fake religion that allows it to pass off its technology as divine favor. The story concerns the Foundation's attempt to gain influence on a planet that has no interest in its religion or technology. And the winner is I, Rocket by Ray Bradbury. Hi, I'm Zen Cho, the author of the Sorcerer to the Crown novels and the Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water. I also won the Hugo for Best Novelette at Dublin World Con in 2019 for my story, If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. 
I'm very pleased to present the Richard Hugo Award for Best Novelette. Best Novelette is awarded for a science fiction or fantasy story of between 7,500 and 17,500 words. The 1944 finalists are Arena by Frederick Brown, Astounding Science Fiction, June 1944. It sees a human and alien fighting to the death to decide the fate of their entire civilizations, a plot subsequently recycled for the Star Trek episode of the same name. The Big and the Little, The Merchant Princess by Isaac Asimov, Astounding Science Fiction, August 1944. This later appeared as a chapter in his novel Foundation under the new title, The Merchant Princess. It explores divisions within the Foundation, its organization storing advanced technology in the galaxy reverting to barbarism, as well as the Foundation's conflicts with its neighbors. The Children's Hour by Lawrence O'Donnell, C.L. Moore and Henry Kuttner, Astounding Science Fiction, March 1944. The married couple created an initial setup about repressed memories, the children's hour, moves on to broach ideas of people breaking through to previously unimaginable conceptions of how the universe works. City by Clifford D. Simak, astounding science fiction, May 1944. Unusual for 1940s science fiction in that it looks at the social effects of technological change. In this case, the flight from urban centers that results when cheap energy and flying cars make dispersed living possible. No Woman Born by C.L. Moore, Astounding Science Fiction, December 1944. We examine the nature of humanity through an account of Deirdre, a TV star whose body is destroyed in a fire, but whose brain is then housed in a new robot body. Is she still the same person? Is she even still human? Deirdre says yes to both questions, but the men who surround her are less sure. When the Bow Breaks by Lewis Paget, C.L. Moore and Henry Kuttner, Astounding Science Fiction, November 1944. A husband and wife are informed by time travellers from the future that their baby is the first of a new race of superpowered mutants. The powers soon start to manifest to the dismay of the parents. And the winner is... City by Clifford D. Simmer. Astounding Science Fiction, May 1944. Hi, I'm Martha Wells, and I'm a past Hugo winner in the Best Novella category for the Murderbot Diaries, All Systems Read, and Artificial Condition. I'm here to announce the finalists and the winner for the Best Novella category in the 1944 Retro Hugo Awards. Best Novella goes to a science fiction and fa or fantasy story of between 17,500 words and 40,000 words. The 1944 finalists are The Changeling by A.E. Van Vaught. Astounding Science Fiction, April 1944. This was later published with other stories as the fix-up novel, The Beast. Its hero discovers that his apparently humdrum life is alive in planted memories and that he's actually some kind of Superman. A God Named Crew by Henry Kuttner. Thrilling Wonder Stories, Winter 1944. It's about an American scientist who finds himself accidentally installed as the high priest to an obscure Tibetan deity that has decided that it wants to see the world. Hijinks ensue when the scientist and deity bumble into the Second World War. Intruders from the Stars by Ross Rocklin. Amazing Stories, January 1944. This focuses on a beautiful woman that leads an invasion force from outer space, whose technology completely outclasses that of Earth. Only a New York reporter and a missionary return from Africa stand in her way. The Jewel of Bass by Lee Brackett. Planet Stories, Spring 1944. This nods strongly towards fantasy, with its protagonist inhabiting a strange world of mysterious legends that, gradually come, that they gradually come to realize have more than a grain of truth. Killdozer by Theodore Sturgeon, astounding science fiction, November 1944. Sturgeon's only story from 1944 it is partly inspired by his time operating a bulldozer for the U.S. Army, and features a malevolent alien intelligence possessing a bulldozer and using it to go on a lethal rampage. Trog by Murray Leinster, Astounding Science Fiction, 1944. The heroes race to discover who or what is behind the campaign of sabotage that is threatening to bring humanity's technological civilization to an end. Is the enemy the mysterious and invisible Trogs, or is it the collective spirit of humanity revolting against a natural reliance on machine technology? The winner is Killdozer by Theodore Sturgeon, Astounding Science Fiction, November 1944.
Hello, my name is Mary Robinette Kowal, and I took home the Hugo Award for Best Novel in 2019. So they've invited me back here to 1944 to present the Hugo for Best Novel. The Best Novel category recognizes works of science fiction or fantasy of 40,000 words or more. The 1944 finalists are The Golden Fleece, Hercules, My Shipmate, by Robert Graves, Castle, Later republished as Hercules, My Shipmate, this novel treats us to an ironic retelling of the famous legend of how Hercules, Jason, and a shipload of heroes set sail to steal the titular Golden Fleece. Land of Terror by Edgar Rice Burroughs, Edgar Rice Burroughs, Inc., is the penultimate book in the Pellucidar series, set in the hollow space inside our own world. The book follows a group of people from our world on the Earth's surface, traveling through the world beneath, where they encounter dinosaurs, giant ants, saber-toothed tigers, and primitive humans. Shadow Over Mars, the nemesis from Terror by Lee Brackett, Startling Stories, Fall 1944, tells of a revolt on Mars against the all-powerful company and a hero who comes to be the Martian's greatest hope. Lee Brackett was later to go on to become the first woman who was nominated for the Hugo Awards in 1956. Sirius, a fantasy of love and discord by Olaf Stapledon, Zephyr and Warburg, t details the travails of the titular dog who accidentally has his intelligence raised to human levels, with Sirius suffering from philosophical angst and struggling to maintain his friendship with the human girl who loves him. The Wind on the Moon by Eric Linklater, Macmillan, is a British children's novel that starts off with the protagonist's father heading off to fight in the Second World War. While he is away, the children find themselves caught up in increasingly fantastical adventures, with the fantasy eventually escaping from their world of exciting scrapes to engulf their father, who has to be rescued not from some German prisoner of war camp, but from an imaginary realm in which he is being held prisoner. The Winged Man by E. Main Hull and A. E. Van Vogt. Astounding Science Fiction, May through June, 1944. The Winged Man was credited solely originally to E. Main Hull, but her husband, A. E. Van Vogt, added his name when it was published in a book form because he was more prolific and they thought it would sell better. But in this two installment story, which was originally published in Astounding, a U.S. submarine mysteriously was transported to the far future, where its crew find themselves caught up in a struggle between winged bird people and sea-dwelling fish people. And the winner is Shadow Over Mars, The Nemesis from Terror, by Lee Brackett, Startling Stories, Fall 1944. And that's it for our journey through the science fiction of fantasy of 1944. We acknowledge all the winners and their kin. We hope that you've enjoyed your time with us at the Retro Hugo Awards. And now, we're delighted to bring you the 2020 Sir Julius Vogel Awards. These recognize works by New Zealanders published in 2019. We were all thrilled to have this unique opportunity to show off the amazing work being done by creators from Aotearoa in New Zealand. It means the world to all of us that we're able to share this ceremony with you. Kia ora and welcome to the 2020 Sir Julius Vogel Awards, which recognises excellence and achievement by New Zealanders and New Zealand's residents in the UK in science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Nominees for these awards during the 2019 calendar. My name is Linnell Howell, and I am the chair of the Sir Julius Vogel Awards subject. Um, I'm John Toon, and I'm the president of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Association of New Zealand, or SN Labs. Now you'll notice we've forgotten what that acronym stands for. <laughs> Drop that into casual conversation. Um, before we go on to the awards themselves, we'd like to acknowledge 
uh, the room of the rest of the students who are in the subcommittee, Norman and Kate, and Jan Butterworth from the front. And I would like to thank John oh, and you. his lovely wife Jo for their assistance with the uh, counting of the votes this week. Finally, I'd like to thank Kelly Bueller and Holly Lynn for their assistance with creating this amazing space. Awards have been presented since 2002 from humble beginnings where there were just a few nominees and a few nominations. The, the awards have grown from year to year. This year we saw the highest number of nominations made at 970 valid nominations. Yeah, it kept me busy. <laughs> we congratulate everyone who was nominated on the long list and celebrate in this ceremony those who have been on the final since. You can find out more about Sir Julius Vogel, thanks to Alan Parker from Auckland for putting together the act this time. Yes, well done, Sir Julius Vogel was a 19th century white guy to be proud of. Damn! <laughs> nice there. Let's be awards for the yes. mm. Our first award for the evening is Best Novel. The nominees for the Best Novel were The Dawn Hounds, Natasha Stoddick. The Blacksmith by Barbara Howe. Into the Ashes by Lee Murray. The Prince of Secrets by AJ Lancaster. And Solar Federation by Jesse Malcoy. And the winner is. The Dawnhound! Um, I was so convinced I wasn't going to win, I did not prepare a speech! Oh. <laughs> um. Thank you. This is huge. This is really emotional and I mean it wasn't just me. A book isn't just one person, so And in that note the most the uh, award for best youth novel. The nominees for best youth novel this year were The Clock Hill and The Thief by Gareth Ward. Thank you. Uh, Tyrelia by S. R. Manson. Ringlet and The Day the Ocean Was Stopped by Felicity Williams. Dragon Rift, Riders of Fire, Book Three by Eileen Muller. And Light in My Blood by Jean Gilbert and William Dresden. And the winner is... Hardly bear the tension. in the sea Woo. by Gareth Ward. Woo. The nominees for Best Novella Novelette were From a Shadow Grave by Andy C. Buchanan. We All Fall by Helen Vivian Fletcher. Ventiforms by Sean Monaghan. Would She Be Gone by Melanie Harding Shaw. And Hunger's Truth by AJ Fitzgerald. You're the uh, winner of the Sir Julius Vogue Award for Best Novella Slash Novelette, but not for Best Slash. Maybe next year. Is From a Shadow Grave by Andy Buchanan. <laughs> Oh. 
Thanks so much. This is really awesome. I'm so pleased about this. Um, as with any book, a huge number of people went into creating it, um, including my publisher, Marie, here. Um, an excellent team from Virginia Publishing. Um, I know Rin's here. And of course, the cover artist, Emma Weekly. So thank you so much to them and to all of you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, the, uh, the nominees for Best Short Story now. So the nominees for Best Short Story were A Shriek Across the Sky by Casey Lucas. <laughs> um, Losing Face by Lee Murray. Work and Income Gothic by Jack Ramil Cottrell. Fisher by Melanie Hardingshaw. <laughs> Chasing Oumuamua by Nishon Monahan. <laughs> and Proof of Concept by James Rowland. just telling my friends and my husband here that I haven't won an award for my writing since I was in year five. So, um, like, like to think I'm a little better since then. But uh, thank, thank you so much to everybody who has um, you know, put their blood, sweat, and tears into this ceremony, to everyone who voted, and um, to everyone who couldn't be here and is watching online. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, like, like Alex said, have a good night. <laughs> we're, we're sorry for the flashback in year five. <laughs> <laughs> the nominees for this collective book were Enter the Mire by Casey Lucas, <laughs> Dark Winds, Dark Winds, Opal Wellington. Chilling Tales of the Weird and the Strange by Tabitha Wood. <laughs> Here's Best Aotearoa New Zealand Science Fiction and Fantasy Volume 1, edited by Marie Hodgkinson. <laughs> Beyond the City Limits, Fantasy and Science Fiction Anthology, edited by Kura Kalita. <laughs> Flash Frontier Speculative Fiction Issue, edited by AJ Fitzwater and Tim Jones. And the Sir Julius Vogel Award goes to. I hope you can keep some more lines. Goes to the Year's Best Art Show New Zealand and Science Fiction and Fantasy, Volume 1, edited by Marie Hodgkinson. This is a fantastic honour. Thank you so much um, to all the authors who submitted the work to the Year's Best. Without which, obviously, it would be really hard to put together an anthology. Um, to Emma Weekly, who produced a gorgeous cover for the book, um, and to all the bookstores and libraries around New Zealand who have supported it. I'm also really pleased to announce the second volume in the series will be launched at Con Zealand this season. At 8 p.m. New Zealand time and whatever time it is, whatever else you are. I'll be later, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, then, the next category is Best Professional Production Publication. And our two nominees are Swords, the webcomic by Matthew Willis, or Haunt 
deep, like heavier tubs. And the award goes to. Swords, the webcomic by the <laughs> Now, as a special treat, and quite unexpectedly, we'd like to welcome our artist guest of honour, Greg Broadmoor, to join us on stage. Come on, Greg. Come on, Greg. visit us at the last one. The nominees for Best Professional Artwork are the cover for The Dawn Hounds, created by Pepper Curry. The cover for Dragon Pearl, created by Vivian Tone. The cover for From a Shadow, sorry, From a Shadow Grey, Created by Emma Weekly. And illustrations for Tia Tamu Smelly Giant, created by Leia Run. And the Sajidius Vogel Award goes to. The winner for Best Professional Artwork is the cover for Dragon Pearl, Vivian 2. Also, uh, an, an option on the ballot in these situations was carried forward, so it's not a given. Tension remains. <laughs> Don't want to ruin the excitement. And this is Julius Vogel Award for Best Dramatic Presentation. Well, the temptation to say La La Land at this point is. Uh, <laughs> Undo it. Undo it. <laughs> was extraordinarily high. The winner of Best Dramatic Presentation is Dr. Who the Elite. We now come to the fan categories. These categories uh, recognize the works of fans in artistic endeavors uh, in the field of science fiction and fantasy within local groups, local fan groups. Um, there's a lot of fans who uh, volunteer their time to support uh, science fiction in New Zealand, their love of the genre and their fan community. And it's uh, our honor to present the fan awards for Stuart Vogels this year, beginning with Best Fan Production Publication. I said, well, I took this one over, isn't it? It is. Move, move aside for a moment, thank you. Uh, this, this will become clear in a minute. The nominations, the nominees for Best Fan Production slash Publication were the Geysercon book produced by Grace Bridges. <laughs> Plant Life by Leah Rose. Phoenix Zine, produced by Linnell and John Howe. <laughs> Unfortunately, Linnell couldn't be with us. Anyway. And The Consequence LARP, written by Callum Upton, Toby Stewart, and Sarah Damon. <laughs> can't, can't take that, thank you very much. Your hand up, up, up. And the Sir Julius Vogel Award for Best Fan Production Publication 
goes to Plant Life by Leia Rose. for best fan writing with Sit Rep by Alex Lindsay and here. And Welcome to the Con by Grace Bridges. And the Sir Julius Vogel Award goes to Why are these envelopes so hard to open? Alex Lindsay. Uh, okay, so the next category is an artwork category. If only there were a, a, an artist here to help us with awards. <laughs> Greg. versus Geysers by Kat Oliver. Deet by Leia Rose. And Wilder Girl. Fan artwork goes to Deet from Taylor Rock. Taylor Rock. Yeah. <laughs> I also wanted to thank everyone for nominating me, um, especially Andy, who has like, nominated me in the first few years because um, I've never been able to. I was sitting there kicking myself saying, well, that was a terrible speech. I kind of just panicked. Not many people get a do-over, so this is nice. <laughs> Time to thank some specific people. Um, number one, I really want to thank my agent, Dave. Um, I was just kind of drunk one night, and Dave said, can I be your agent? And I went, yes, that'll be fun. And... Those of you who've known Dave over the course of the con know he's the hardest working person in the entire country and is almost single-handedly responsible for this book succeeding. Um, I would like to thank my family, both the one I started with and the ones I found. 
Um, I would like to thank the Wellington Spitfit community. Over the last sort of 18 months, there's been this explosion, which has been shepherded by Mel, mostly. Mel was the one who organized it in the first place. Um, I don't think any of us knew how many of us there were, and it was this really empowering moment to kind of come together and realize that. Um, I'd like to thank Marie, who taught me to edit uh, and taught me InDesign. I don't know whether I've used those powers for good, uh, but I hope so. I want to thank Pepper, who did the incredible cover. Um, uh, I want to thank uh, Hugfest, the group chat, that has been kind of cleaning up at the awards tonight. We're doing well. Um, but who supported me from stage one of this thing. This production started in 2013 with a really, really bad draft we called the Ass Mushroom Book. Uh, and it, it ended up being this thing called the Dawnhounds, which people seem to really like. Uh, I don't know what sort of a strange person writes a novel, but all of us, we're all weird in our own beautiful ways. So thank you, everybody. Oh. This makeup took three hours. I'm not going to ruin it by crying. Thank you. The nominee for Services to Fandom was Grace Bridget. nominated and voted this year. Thank you to my family who put up with various states of anxiety and absence from me over the last year. Thank you to my Wellington Spec Fit crew and my Slack crew who are amazing. Thank you to everyone who's been working to make Con Zealand inclusive and especially thank you to my partner in inclusion and very good friend Cassie Hart. the award ceremony. Um, we'd like to thank all of you for attending. Thank you very much. Um, coming here live to celebrate with our finalists. Um, we'd like to thank our international audience for watching this ceremony later. Um, we hope you haven't have already had an opportunity to look at some of the New Zealand talent on offer in our New Zealand program that you will seek out those uh, items on the schedule and become more familiar with New Zealand's rich science fiction offerings. I'd like to just also thank uh, Kelly Hugh over here. And Norman Cates for organizing this event. Thank you very much. And, and uh, I think if, if Linnell turns around, she will be greeted with quite a surprise. Oh, and, uh, my God. Nearly seven kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't want to say. 
Um, tell us the story. Yeah, tell us the story. But um, seriously, thank you very much. I am quite literally speechless, which for anybody who's been on a committee meeting with me knows that that's really... <laughs> doesn't happen, no. He's the president, I'm the vice president of the local club. He knows all the issues. But um, everybody knows that the only way I got through Comp Zealand and the work that's been needed is I have said, don't thank me, buy me chocolate. And um, every time Norman has gone overseas to a convention to do promotion for Comp Zealand, I've said to him, you owe me chocolate when you come back to a duty free. There have been times when it doesn't appear. So, this is payback. However, I do not know how long it's going to take me to eat it. <laughs> Maybe in the next week. You can't make it last past the year. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm hoping it will last past the week until Conzealand is over. Thank you very much, Kelly and Norman, for this extraordinary thing. <laughs> Quite literally lost for words. Oh, brilliant. Aren't we? And on that note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I'd lost, I'd lost pleasure to thank Greg Broadmoor for presenting our arts awards. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back. A huge congratulations to all our SJV nominees, finalists, and winners. Thank you to those of you who have participated by voting and watching. And thank you to our fabulous volunteers who brought the ceremony into the digital space. Haere tu atu, hoke tu mai. Farewell to you all. Tino rangatira tanga, who's never seated. Takita. <laughs>